All right, CNT 120, we are working on Chapter 5 on cabling. So this chapter, we're going to talk a little bit about signals and a little bit about different types of media, uh, mainly twisted pair fiber optic, a little bit about coax, um, and then also some troubleshooting tools towards the end. So first thing we need to remember is uh, with networking medium, this is the this is the physical layer, the physical foundation of our data transmission. Our early Ethernet networks use coax cable. Our modern Ethernet networks use twisted pair with fiber optic and wireless, as as a lot of us use uh, for connectivity, especially at home. Um, signals can travel, and I like to put this in here as a reminder. Um, if I have a copper cable, we're going to be sending uh, voltage pulses, current pulses, pulses of electricity, if you will. Those pulses of electricity, you know, pulse followed by no pulse, pulse followed by no pulse would be one, zero, one, zero kind of thing. If I'm dealing with fiber optic cable, these are going to be light pulses. You know, think about turning a flashlight on and off. Flashlight's on, it's a one. Flashlight's off, it's zero. So pulse, nothing, pulse, nothing. Um, if I'm dealing with wireless, I'm dealing with radio frequency. We'll talk about this more in Chapter 6. Uh, but I'm going to be using ra uh, electromagnetic waves. I'm going to be using frequencies, if you will, uh, of radio waves to represent my ones and zeros. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind as I'm sending signals from A to B. A couple terms we run into with transmission, bandwidth and throughput. Uh, a lot of people try to use these interchangeably, but when you get right down to it, they do express something different. Uh, the bandwidth is really the capacity. That's why I put in a little air quotes there, or little quotes there. The capacity of link. How much could it theoretically carry if there was no traffic, collisions, noise interference, etc.? What is the capacity of that link? Meanwhile, throughput is what, what are you actually getting through? What is actually getting through with traffic, collisions, noise, interference, etc.? Um, and the book used this, this picture, and it's actually a pretty good picture. Uh, you think about if you have a, a, a highway with no traffic lights or stop signs or anything on, you just have cars kind of moving along, and if you add more lanes, you're getting more bandwidth you know two lane highway three lane highway four lane highway or uh, when i drove out in la once upon a time six lane highway that's a lot of bandwidth capability for cars moving through and as long as you don't have traffic lights stop signs or anything like that i can get a lot of cars through per time throughput though however is the measurement of how many does actually get through per time. That's why I put a little traffic light there, or that could be a stop sign or a yield sign, um, or merging. You know, you go from three lanes down to two lanes kind of thing. What actually gets through per time is a different measurement. Um, so throughput is really a measurement of what are you actually getting. Um, and that does matter sometimes um, when you're talking moving data, especially in early days of wireless. You might be rated at 50 meg, but you're actually getting 10 meg through because of interference, noise, etc. Uh, so bandwidth is really a measure of what is the capacity. Throughput is really what are you actually getting if you measure. What are you actually getting through per time? We measure this in terms of bits per second. We measure our um, throughput in bits per second. So remember your prefixes, 1,000 bits per second, kilobits, one kilobit, 1,000 bits per second. Megabits is million or million bits per second. Uh, G or gigabit is billion bits per second. And your T for Terra is a trillion bits per second. Um, most things we are dealing with in bandwidth land are in the megabit and gigabit range um, as, as, our, as we're dealing with throughput. Uh, that's mostly what we're going to encounter, especially at this point in time. You know, a 100 meg link or a 1,000 meg or gigabit link or 10 gig link. Uh, that's typically where we're going to find most of our throughputs at this point in time. As I'm sending data, there is always the possibility of a transmission flaw caused by noise. Noise, by definition, in our in our communication world here, is any in undesirable influence degrading or distorting our signal, um, and that's typically measured in decibels, dB decibels. Common sources of noise for our data transmissions are EMI or crosstalk. EMI or crosstalk. 
EMI, electromagnetic interference. This is interference caused by um, basically think of power lines and, and things consuming electrical power. Uh, so things like motors, things like power lines, things like television photocopiers, you know, uh, 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 I'm thinking of uh, elevators, you know, kicking on those sorts of things. Anything using our electrical power can potentially cause electromagnetic interference, basically magnetic fields from that power. Uh, a smaller subset in there is radio frequency interference, uh, interference from strong radio signals. If you've ever driven um, near a, a um, radio station when they're they're sending their signal out, sometimes that signal is strong enough that it bleeds over to neighboring channels. Um, that would be radio frequency interference. Well, um, I should say that's an example of your radio frequency overwhelming other frequency bands. But in a communication world, a long data cable can act like an antenna and actually pick up radio waves, radio frequencies. Um, so that would be a form of interference, a form of electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference. And here's just a couple of reminders of things that can actually cause this type of interference. Motors, power lines, uh, lightning strikes or thunderstorms, that sort of thing. These are long, these are um, sources of these surges of magnetic fields that can cause or induce noise into a data signal. Crosstalk is a signal um, that might be picked up from a neighboring data cable, if you will. Signal on one wire infringing on a, the signal on a adjacent wire. Um, this comes from the days of phone lines, where you would literally have phone lines all laying together in a, I hate to use the word trough, but like a tray. Um, you would have one phone call, one wire pair, and if you had a phone call going on in a wire pair near it, it might actually pick up that phone call and you would hear somebody else's phone conversation on your phone line. Uh, that was crosstalk. Well, as we moved into data days, that can happen too. If I have um, two data signals in cables right near each other, one, one cable can literally influence the signal on another one. Um, and if I have that ha if I have that occur near the source, we call it near and crosstalk. If we have it occur towards the far end, away from the source of, of the signal, we call it far end. And if I'm dealing with two neighboring cables, we can call it alien crosstalk. So let's take a look here real quick. I have, I think I have some signals here. Um, here is actually, you know, a signal on one wire that that signal produces all magnetic waves. Those magnetic waves can actually induce or put signal into a neighboring wire. Um, that would be crosstalk. If it's happening near the source, this would be near end crosstalk. If it's happening at the far end of a cable run or, or a cable uh, you know, a cable transmission, if you will, that'd be far end crosstalk. And if it's happening in neighboring cables, here they give you an example of the brown pair here interfering with the brown pair here interfering with the brown pair here. They use that because the brown is typically, you know, maybe the send or receive in a signal. So will they all be maybe doing the similar thing? Um, they might interfere with each other. And same thing here with the blue. They just happen to be laying next to each other. Those are all those are all tests that you do as you're installing cabling. You're looking for those sources of interference. Uh, attenuation is another term we run into. That's the weakening of the signal, the loss of signal strength over distance. You might actually hear this called insertion loss. Uh, some meters they actually call it insertion loss. So it's kind of kind of think of those as similar terminologies, if you will. Uh, but attenuation is your weakening of a signal over distance. Uh, I use the example of like yelling across a football field. If there's nobody out there, there's no game going on, no wind, you can probably hear me across the football field. Uh, but if I try to do that same thing when it's a windy day, you might not hear me. If I try to do that on a, on a game night when there's a game going on the field, they'll never hear me. There's too much interference around because um, the signal is weakening on top of all the outside interference. Uh, we can actually boost a signal. We can either use an amplifier or a repeater. Uh, now, the book I don't think mentioned amplifier. Amplifier is typically an analog type thing, uh, but some people hear that term, so I'm just going to quick... Um, uh, talk about that as well as our repeater. Uh, the amplifier is just going to take whatever signal it gets and try to boost it. Let me go this way. So if I have a signal here and I pick up some noise along the way, here, here's showing my dis distorted signal. As that weakens, the amplifier picks it up and just re 
basically boosts anything it gets, including the noise. Um, so that's typically like an analog thing. We don't see that too much in our data. We typically see things that are in the repeater realm. Um, we're typically dealing with digital signals. So that's, the previous one here was an analog signal. That's, that's um, a good example there. Here we're dealing with a digital signal, so we're literally sending ones and zeros, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero kind of thing. Um, as that signal picks up noise, you notice it gets distorted. When it gets to the repeater, the repeater is getting one, zero, one, zero. It actually regenerates a clean one, zero, one, zero. So as long as it's receiving, you know, the proper signal one, zero, one, zero, it actually regenerates a clean one, zero, one, zero. Um, so devices like our switches and so forth um, are actually going to regenerate the signal when it receives it. It doesn't just amplify and send it along. It actually regenerates the clean 1010. Um, so just a real quick, as we're dealing with signal attenuation, when it hits a device like a switch or a router, it's going to regenerate a clean 1010. We also run in some terms called, uh, terms here, latency and round trip time. Latency is literally just the time it takes for the transmission to get from, you know, A to B, if you will. Um, if that is a great distance, the, that delay could a cause, that could cause data errors, if you will. Um, if that is too great of a distance, too great of a uh, delay, if you will. Um, the, the thing that will cause latency is our cable lengths and maybe some intervening connectivity devices. If I have connectivity devices that are doing lots of processing or very busy, they could actually add some time to our data transfer. And we measure all this in round trip time. How long does it take to go from sender to receiver and then back to uh, the, this, the, from receiver to sender? So basically how long does it get, take to get there and get back? Um, if that's too great, we could have data errors, maybe things arriving out of order, that sort of thing. I think I have example here of like, you know, hey, here's here's latency. If I'm sending through a satellite link to the other side of the earth, if you will, I always use the example of the Olympics. Usually Olympics are occurring uh, on another continent, pretty good distance away. So a lot of your signals that, that you're watching from, you know, bobsledding or whether it be, um, you know, sailing halfway around the world, a lot of those signals are literally being broadcast to a satellite. And it does take time. <clears throat> excuse me, it does take time for that signal to reach the satellite and then reach back here to where we are. Um, and a lot of people recognize that, but there's always there's always some reporters over there that don't recognize that it takes time uh, for the signal to get there. So they always start talking over somebody else. Uh, but that's just the nature of those signals being transmitted. And here is just showing you the time it takes to get from there and back. Um, we're usually talking milliseconds, uh, sometimes nanoseconds, but up to milliseconds. Um, there's our latency. Now, if we have too much latency between our data, we could be getting jitter. And jitter is when we're getting packets out of order at the destination, um, and our signal might be corrupt because of that. Think about a phone conversation. Uh, my phone packets arriving at the destination, if they're arriving in order, okay. If they're arriving in order and slightly delayed, I might have kind of a jerky phone conversation, but it still works. I'm so understandable. But if I have a lot of delay on my network, a lot of latency, I might have packets arrive out of order, and now I start sounding like Yoda. You know, my message you will receive, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that would be jitter. That's kind of an extreme example of jitter, but that is, uh, that would be jitter. Things arriving out of order at the destination. So in any kind of like voice or video, they tend to have devices in there to try to de-jitter. Um, it's usually like a little buffer, a little memory buffer that kind of like holds it for just a fraction of a second for things to get in, in line and then spool it out to you in a, in a uh, uh, more organized or more, um, more non-delayed manner, if you will. All right, we'll come back in the next one and continue on.